It's 107.5 WBLS, the program of Sunday morning. Wayne Gilman back with you. Second half of our show, and our special guest is author Relentless Aarons, and along with publicist here, Gloria Dula Wilson, we'll be back with her in just a minute. But continuing with the conversation, what we were discussing before the break, again, everything points to discipline in terms of putting together the book. Um, certain structures, and I also uh, glean from you a certain amount of confidence. Not everybody is as confident as perhaps as you are to have their material read. Is, is there a certain amount of vein and, and ego associated with this as well? How do you know oh, yeah. that you're good enough? Oh, yeah, because um, it, the confidence comes from experience. When I say experience, I mean um, you you have to, as my friend Les Brown would say, you have to fake it before you make it. Mm. And and essentially, while I was locked up, I was a writer. Oh, excuse mm. me, I'm a, I'm an author. You know, while I'm in prison, I, okay. somebody's coming uh, to ask me the time. What? There's, there's, there's 200 other people over here. There's 1,800 people in the prison. <laughs> you can go, always go to somebody else and ask right. them the time. Why are you bothering me? I'm an yeah. author. Do you understand uh, that? No, but the state of mind, I may not say that to the next right, person, right. but I'm thinking it. Yeah. And essentially, um, by thinking that and getting into that state of mind, I'm, I'm seeing that long-term picture is that, all right, here I see 30 novels printed already. Mm -hmm. I also see three different translations of those same novels. So it's not 30 novels, it's 120. Mm. I also see, um, uh, um, of those 30, I see 10 other books that are broken down into 10 different parts and with their graphic novels for children. So now I'm, I'm somewhere in the 200 um, range in terms of titles. So when I see the big picture, I, um, I see a billion dollar empire. So a billion dollar man is not going to waste his time on, on, on stage one of the plan, on stage two of the plan, stage three of the plan. Stage one is just as important as stage 100. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, yes, indeed, um, it, it was the time, it was the discipline, um, but it was also me being relentless um, that, that, that led to me doing what I did. I.e. The, uh, the, the, the stage name, Relentless? <laughs> yeah. The, okay. Relentless, um, relentless is who I am. Mm -hmm. It's what I am. Um, Aaron, you just remember Aaron as H Hank Aaron, the home run hitter. Every book that, that I put out will be a home run. Okay. Yeah, there's a certain confidence Vanity, and yeah. a certain vein uh -huh. that you have to have in any sport. Um, sports psychology mm -hmm. says that once you do something long enough, now it's because how, when Michael's hanging, his tongue is hanging out of his mouth, I you know. know what time it yes, is. Exactly. You know what time it is. So when relentless, mm -hmm. so in my mind, I'm running down the court. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in my mind, I'm running down the court of urban literature. Yeah. And the ball is in my hand. And it's my, it's, um, it's up to me if I'm going to shift left, snake right, or, 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 or spin around and slam dunk in literature. That's, that's me. And so they better get out of the way or they get trampled. Really. Either you're part of the solution, you're part of the problem. So, so, um, maybe the players on the court were accommodating Michael Jordan when, you know, when he was going for the slam dunk. I mm. don't know, but I know that when I'm thinking in a Jordan-esque state of mind or a, a Tiger Woods state of mind, I'm thinking, no, yeah, can, nobody Lord. can mess with me, yeah. you know. I, so it is a certain cockiness to mm -hmm. it, but I attribute that to my talent and and the the pain that it took to to find my talent. Right. I, I've toughened my Teflon as yeah. a result of 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 these hardened experiences. I have found, and uh, you know, as you mentioned that that once one has gone through some hardship or some pain, that has served as the underpinnings of a motivation to, to write. I know it served me. I may not even, you know, have anything published, but I can go through a very painful period in my own life and be, you know, prompted to pick pen and paper and start writing, even if it's about that experience or something else I'd like to write about. But, you know, is that the same with you? I mean, is, is it a situation that you have to be motivated to come up with a book? Because I, I noticed that, that your books so far, the ones at least I've been able to see here, and I haven't read any of them, you know, have different <laughs> subject matters. I mean, one discusses sex and money. 
Uh, the other one is uh, just, just looks like sex <laughs> alone, you know. And the and, other, the, and other, the other one that, is uh, the, uh, last the last kingpin. What is that about? That's like the Scarface in New Jack City in one book. That's my epic novel. Gotcha. But I use the tool of um, yeah. I, actually, I'll have a seed thought. Oh. I'll have a seed of thought. Um, actually, push was motivated by um, an interesting story. You're the first one is hearing. Um, I told you I wrote that in solitary confinement. Yeah. And um, um, in Fort Dix, where I was at, did most of the six years in Fort Dix. Uh, actually, I started in Allenwood in, in a medium. I was miscategorized. I was putting there with lifers and people with 50 years and people with really had no hope to live. Wow. And literally in the morning, there might be four or five people that had been stabbed that particular morning. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's that bad. And when someone gets stabbed, they lock you down into your cell and you get bag lunches and you may not come out for a few days. Um, um, and they, they even tote people to showers and back, et cetera, mm. et cetera. It's, 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 it's horrible. And, and it's miserable. So I don't mean to, um, to glorify prison by no right. means necessary. Mm. But um, I, I, and, and the crazy thing was that I was there for six months. I wanted to stay there. I didn't know anything else but that environment that I was surviving in. Mm -hmm. And so essentially I had adapted and adjusted to the environment where I didn't belong. So when they came and woke me up and said, hey, you got to go, you know, you're going to uh, a, a low uh, security, security. low security mm -hmm. um, to a camp virtually, I was like, well, you know, I, I really, you know, I was like, is there any way I could stay here? You know, I, I, I started to um, uh, meet people mm -hmm. that were rich in character. Mm -hmm. uh, I started to, um, my resources were in place. I got a bottom bunk. <laughs> I don't know, if anybody's listening to the show, if you're in prison, you locked up, you already know what a bottom bunk means. Well, what does that mean? Yeah, well, you know, you have the top bunk and you have the bottom bunk. Yeah. The bottom bunk is more convenient because you don't have to hop up and oh, right. up okay. and whatever, whatever. Yeah. So I had seniority. Gotcha. So, I mean, you know, um, I lost all that and went to Fort Dix. Now, in Fort Dix, it was more lenient. I was there with... Uh, uh, um, Crazy Eddie Antar, and mm. I was there with some some uh, mafiosos and some you know people people uh, a lot of white collar criminals, mm -hmm. a lot of white collar police that were locked up, judges, yeah. that congressmen. Wow. I was with the mayor of uh, Boston, just just got um, oh, convicted. Right, I was right, up there right. with him. Yeah. It's funny, you know. It's, I, 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 maybe we'll set it for another segment where we can talk about the. <laughs> in, oh, I got lots. I still got prison. <laughs> I have to but, bring you back for that. Oh, wow. <laughs> but um, in a nutshell, um, um, I was locked into segregation unit um, by mistake. Um, what happened was, uh, there was I was trying to get um, something notarized. They have a, a procedure in there. You get something notarized. And one of the counselors notarizes something on Sunday for one hour on Sunday. Mm. So I got there. It was like one hour and one minute late. Mm. Door, mm. door mm. slammed right in my face. Right, right. A woman who um, has a questionable history in Fort Dix of locking fellas up, mm. okay, putting them in the box. I'm putting that in quotes. So um, I get to the window. You only have one minute left. Please, you know, my daughter wants to go to Barbados. She needs her uh, passport, and I just want to sign it there. Mm. No, I'm sorry. Next week. I don't know. So <clears throat> I turned around and left. Ten minutes later, the police came and got me. Yeah, the prison got police. He said, well, you know, um, the such and such a counselor says that you cursed her out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Such and such a counselor said you cursed her out. Uh, tell us what happened. I'm, I'm speechless right, because right. When you, if you say a bad word to a female counselor, or female uh, staff in right. prison, you get locked up. That's just no, just no questions about mm -hmm. it. So I'm not stupid. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't even, you know, look at her funny. Uh -huh. But they locked me up. My word against her is. I they, understand. They had about eight um, guys around. All of them didn't speak English, so mm -hmm. I didn't know even know their names. I might know them by face. Hey, uh, uh, S.A. What's up, uh, homie? How you doing, amigo? You know, mm -hmm. but I don't know their names. So, right, right, right. Um, essentially, I, I, I didn't know who to call at or to get as a witness for the situation, so they locked me up. Mm -hmm. And when they put me in that box, 
I was so angry because I had my routine in play. I was writing books. I was up to 13. And I was up to 19 books that I had written. Wow. Everybody gave me mad respect. They couldn't, you know, they, oh yeah, but who's your publisher? They didn't know that yeah. I'm already there, dog. I'm yeah, already, yeah. I'm already past that. I'm already, but, um, I had written 19 books and then when they locked me up, I, I was, um, so angry that I took, um, to pencil and paper. Now in the, in the hole, you have nothing. Mm. Nothing. They lock you in there. You have no records, no paperwork, no nothing. But the police, the, the, the correction officers would slip paper under the door, pencils under the door, sharpen the pencils when I need them. Uh, I would um, take... Would this put them at risk for doing that or just that they were supportive? Well, of you know, um, it depends on, it depends. They, they, yeah, they were supportive, but it depends on who, like anything, it depends who's with you or who's against you. Now, mm. it, now they have... Um, um, uh, surveillance cameras in the hole, um, but the person who's watching the te monitors, you know, might be friends with one of the correction officers in the hole. So, you know, so they, again, they, they would slip the pencils under the door and the paper, and I would write and write and write. Before you know it, I had a stack of paper um, that was a story. Mm. And um, this was, again, my 19th book. It took me two weeks to write. We're talking about push. Right. And this is. Re this has been called one of my most riveting works. It's it really touches people's hearts. It really, it really, um, it, it shows my spirit, my soul. It may have my loves and my hates, but it's Harlem back based. Mm. It, it goes into the clubs. It goes into the Lennox Lounge and Perks and Wells. I don't know if anybody remembers yeah, Wells, right, but, but it, you know, it goes into this um, this this whole system in Harlem that that once you get in, you're intoxicated and, and, and pushes it. And so it's not, yes, I understand also about commercial sellability and mm. let's face it, money, violence and toe curling sex is, yes, I know. is, is sells. These and, days, yeah. and so I'm drawn into that, but uh -huh. underneath it all, I'm teaching. Underneath it all, people are learning. They're becoming more aware of the things that they shouldn't and should do or the things that they should be careful about, you know, so right. they, they get a big potpourri of uh, not just relentless experiences, but also, you know, their lives. I like to say we're, I'm, I'm writing about you. Mm. Interesting, interesting. And as far as uh, uh, the other books are concerned, uh, 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 I guess Platinum Dolls is almost Platinum Dolls is like theme. my erotic thriller. I wanted uh -huh. to put that out because I heard about a certain other author who had eight or nine erotica books out, and I just wanted to put one out to just to, just to crush, <laughs> just to, just there's my yeah, athletic yeah, okay. just to crush that author's yeah. you know. And, and this and, other and, author who will remain nameless. Yeah, who will remain nameless. Is, I got love for all my brothers and sisters. Yeah, of okay. course, right. no, I got love for all I my brothers and sisters. I I think I know what you're yeah, about. but um, right. you know, this this I, I want to bring another level to the game. Yeah, yeah um, the dialect is okay. It's, it's all right to have dialect that's urban, that's slang, etc. But I want to step it up where you know um, there's there's interesting plots and interesting twists and. The, the character development is thick and rich, mm -hmm. where you f walk away from my book feeling enriched. I got an uh, uh, email from a woman who works for the Department of Justice mm. in Washington. Right. She writes and she said that, I can't believe it, I'm sitting here at 5.15 in the afternoon. I should have left the job 15, 20 minutes ago. I'm sitting here reading Platinum Dolls and I'm in tears. She says, I'm a grown woman, I have kids, I've read all of the books, and I can't believe how you've got me with this book. And, and that's just, for me, that's light. It's light work. That, that's, that book, Platinum Dolls, is lightweight. But it was just a, I, one of the 30 books that I wanted to put out that was touching on a different element. It's a guy's battle between lust and love, right. but someone's killing the girls at the same time. Mm. <laughs> um, to recap, Push is um, about a, a man coming of age. You know, he comes home from prison and he tries to adjust in society, but he's unable to. Pretty much a lot of uh, some of the stuff that I've been going through, I but I wrote it before that. it happened. Right. Um, there's a probation officer in there. There's, you know, it's very, it's the cast of Harlem characters, very interesting. You got your Max in mm -hmm. here. And your your your, your chicken heads, <laughs> etc. It's, it's oh, it's very rich. And then the last kingpin, as I said, is a twist between Scarface and New Jack City. It takes you from the streets of the Bronx to the jungles of Bogota, and literally you feel like you're scared straight through that whole ride. So yeah, there's a lot of books. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny as you mentioned all this, uh, you know, and there's so much to talk about. It just seems like we're we're in a period right now where black writers are very much in vogue. 
Um, right. Do you see this period sustaining itself through the next decade? If we can grow, uh -huh. just like uh, um, hip hop, they thought it was going to come and go. Right. But it grew uh, from the Sugar Hill Gang into the next levels, and and you know where it got to a point where cursing was allowed, or rather the sexual innuendos were allowed, mm -hmm. and you know in, in in literature, from the door, that's what we're doing. We're expressing ourselves with those sexual innuendos, with the where where we hold no bars, you know. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm on a uh, I have a, um, a a big seminar coming up at Barnes right. and Nobles, right. um, which will probably be passed by the time this airs. But um, some of the other authors that I pulled, Carl Weber, uh, Kashamba, Kashamba Williams, um, Crystal Lacey Winslow, and also Brenda L. Thomas and Sadiq Banks, all of them have have grabbed on to this urban fiction and they're running with it. And mm -hmm. their their spirits are living through their books. They're living through their characters. And this is what I do. You know, this is what I've learned while I was away. I don't know that every author has read a thousand books to begin with. Many of them on writing. Right. Many I are writing for them, I guess. Right. And uh, I don't know that they've read I'm saying I don't know that they've read books about writing. Ah. Uh. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So there's, there's keys to this that yeah. are taught. And, and it's not just in one book. Mm -hmm. You really have to read a, a, a vast array of books. Mm -hmm. And so I, that's, that's, that's how, you know, that's my, my edge, so to speak. And is that your prerequisite to future writers? Anyone yeah, think that they, they should read. have a, a potpourri? Readers are leaders. Uh -huh. Just in any, anything, not just writing. No, I know. Not just in writing. Mm -hmm. You know, even in radio, you yeah. just had to read somewhere along oh, the way. Oh, no question about so that. So in order to be at the top of your craft, you have to read. Exactly. So that's why I impress upon all the kids, the readers are leaders. And yeah, the urban, the urban fiction um, is going to move, it's going to grow. I mean, if not just by me alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, with my 30 books, I'm going to take up a whole shelf in a lot of bookstores. Has there yeah. been a breakdown, you know, uh, demographically speaking, who your consumers are? Who would be more inclined to pick up your book? Young, oh, young yeah, black woman, a, young white woman. There, young. No, there are the 70 year old, uh, old, old heads. There are the um, 30 year old. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, oh, man. I, I meet a lot of readers every mm. day, every week, I should say. And because sometimes I hold up in my office, <laughs> I don't want to see nobody. But I meet readers every week, and they're always um, different ages. There's, there's mothers who give, they, they, my books are read in schools. Mm -hmm. Push is something that's passed around. There's two books called Push, by the way. Right. There's one that was published back in the 90s, but this uh, Push is about someone named Push. Let's okay. clear that. And um, they're reading my books in the schools, and, you know, the high school kids and below. Mothers are letting their 12 and 13 year olds read these books, and not just my books, but also other books. Goins, I, you know, that's, it's 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 pretty deep out there. I think it's about awareness. I think you know um, now we're all becoming more aware of the publishing um, industry, right. of what our public will accept. Our market is wide. As 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 um, white people have read my books, mm -hmm. Spanish, Asian, you you name it, mm -hmm. they're reading they're reading um, the Relentless brand. So it's um, and, it's and when nice. you say they're in schools, I mean like I look at this cover and I say to myself, this is kind of racy for not the textbook, maybe, not the te they're not like textbooks no, in the schools, but they'll yeah. be hidden in their book oh, bag, you know, okay, <laughs> they'll be sneaking yeah. them under the desk. <laughs> not um, to disparage teachers what are you've telling, done. yeah, teachers are uh, telling me this, and and yeah, um, a couple of my covers so far are racy, uh -huh. and and. I mean, but on Times Square, that Russell's wife is up there butt oh, naked yeah, with sneakers yeah. on. This is the sign of the times. Yeah. It's about going for it. I mean, you know, um, I mean, I, I can, I'm still going to be doing my community events. I'm still yeah. going to be teaching my people. But I got to, this was something that I thought about two weeks back in 2000. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's written, it's documented, it's already in print. And you're getting paid. What am I going to do? I mean, you're being modest about it, but this is a vehicle in which to sustain. What am I gonna do? I gotta feed my kids. <laughs> I gotta build my billion-dollar business um, so understand. that I can turn around and yeah. make changes and and buy big radio time on BLS okay. and you know I I got. Well, we you hope know. you do. Yeah, you know. it's not a question. Right. I tell you, relentless. I mean, we can go on and on. Yeah. I'm certainly gonna have you back. You know. Uh, to discuss some of the things that you've talked about. Anyone who wishes to get in contact with you, Relentless, uh, quickly, a phone number? Um, wow. Uh, the First, I was going to give the website. Well, why uh, would we do that? Yeah, know? the website is RelentlessAaron.com. That's R-E-L-E-N-T-L-E-S-S, -S, Aaron, A-A-R-O-N.com. No space. 
And um, the phone number is uh, 914-378-5293. That's not going to help anybody that's locked up. Now, um, <laughs> wow. <clears throat> um, anyone that's uh, writing in from prisons, it, they can write to Relentless Content at 9 West Prospect Avenue, Suite 314. That's in Mount Vernon, New York, uh, 10550. Hope you caught that. <laughs> okay, very good. And on that note, we conclude that wraps and ties this edition of Sunday Morning. Wayne Gilman with you, inviting you to stay tuned now for Brother Percy, who's next here, 107.5 WBLS. Have a good week, New York.